Is that like actually a champion? Huh? Is that uh, like yeah. actually a champion? No, this is a real champ. Right. I have just been. I don't mean like practicing her, I just mean like stacking up my passive to funny numbers and seeing how fast the little noodle arms will go. And now I'm about to, uh, I guess we're about to start, aren't we? So I should probably get my act together. Well, funnily enough, uh, the only people in this lobby... Oh, there's Yuna. Okay. I was going to say, the whole enemy team is here. But... Um... Oh, you were in practice tool. Yeah, one sec. I'm about to do the funny... up on the funny. I'm coming. Ah, that was disappointing. Oop. There we Lane has invited me to a draft pick. Sorry, duty calls. Yeah, that's unfortunate. He didn't invite me to draft pick, which is also unfortunate. Yeah. No, I meant sorry to you. My duty to normal draft pick calls. I was... Gotta go. Get on my grind. I mean, normal draft picks where, where the real players grind it out, right? It's definitely normal draft. I'm pretty Not sure only... that's the most competitive game mode rides come out with. Hey, get in there with Kuplu 14 and it looks like the most competitive game mode rides released. It's a toss up between that and Nexus Blitz. No, I promise you that the level. The players that I've run into in normal draft games, I, my normals of MR is high enough that it's like, almost, I mean, people aren't trying as hard, so it's obviously not the same, but it's like, similar skill level of players that I would see in solo queue, except uh, more fun because it's normal draft, so I can like five stack it, you know, instead of rank flexing it. I'm not explaining it very well. But these normal draft picks are the, the the peak of league. Me and Cooper, we sat in a we were duo queuing normals at like 2 a.m. the other day, and we sat in queue together for 59 minutes. Oh, nice! We hit it in queue. That's a good minutes. bonding experience, really. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if that was the day Morbius 24-7 was live. Oh, they just linked to the stats page in the Masters chat. Open it up. Uh, Blue side has just a huge 51% to 49% advantage. So we probably oh need to go blue side here. Oh my god. When will Riot do something about the prevalence of blue side and Ages. Yeah. Vanguard lead. 27 to 26. That's actually kind of incredible. But Incredible how broken Blue Side is. Yeah.
we have a draft pick? Uh, no. Nice. Wait, it's 51-49 in AGL too, the gold league. My god. That's actually kind of incredible. Oh, it's 57-43 in platinum. Well, that checks out. I would ex probably use that as the point of reference. Diamond's also 57-43. I would say... Flat diamond leagues are historically the pinnacle of the League of Legends experience. Anything below that is too goofy. Anything above that, uh, it's not goofy enough. True. Now we have draft links. And we have teams on the opposite sides that I thought they were. I'm such a fool. <laughs> they got you. Fucking boomed me. So this is a this is goofy goobers. The goofy goobers. Belveth enabled in Aegis, do you know? Uh, yes, as of today, Belveth is enabled, I'm pretty sure. Well, I know Jared doesn't think the champ's very good, but he might be thinking it's better. I know his opinion was shifting on it. I don't. She did. She. I think the changes to this patch were like a buff all around. They just gave her 50 more attack range. It's actually huge. I like that Hot Damn Jam is R for draft. Uh, they are nowhere near in the correct order in lobby. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Kyle and Indigo yeah. are infiltrating the enemy team. We stole somebody named Kenner, Kenny Master Lin. So. Yeah. I think I played on a tryout or something with that guy once. That wouldn't surprise me. At, at the ELO you're at, at that point, Yeah. you've probably played with everybody. Uh, Unless you just not, queue up at completely different times. But not all these guys. <laughs> Um, yeah, I remember uh, I actually had run into Yuna before uh, Rodham Proud's last split. I played one game with him. And, um. Did he say you flamed I'm pretty, him? I, I'm pretty sure I flamed him, yeah. That's how you do I was. I was not at my best. I, only I, think I, was, summoners here. I was playing a little too much solo queue, and it was getting to me. I, for one, would oh. never believe that the 2004 Lexus GX that I know, GX470 that I know, would ever blame anybody. Uh, informed. It's like, usually no. Occasional, occasional rough patches. <laughs> Secret is to just not play the game that much. <laughs> then you don't want to flame anyone. Play too much solo queue, then you care too much, and then you then you get annoyed, and then you want to do something about it. That's the secret to League of Legends: is to not play League of Legends. I could buy that. Is to yeah, I'm not playing too much. I mean, at some point, to play League of Legends, you go hot. But, but... Playing like seven solo games a day was bad. Not good. It's because, you know, it's like the start of the season, so it's kind of grind. Oh, the draft started, by the way. Oh, How about... well. Uh, we did it. Where Lipo Lane at? I don't know. Hm. 
Well, uh, welcome. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> this is uh, week number four of Aegis Vanguard League. I realize I hadn't popped out chat yet. Oh, there's a lot of people. It said something in chat. That's interesting. All right. Um, anyway, uh, it's week four of Aegis Vanguard League. Uh, I'm Maris, my co-caster is Lexus, and uh, yeah. we got the Goofy Goobers in Return of the Middle Sticks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Here they are. There's a B1 Wukong, are. so LS is crying somewhere in Korea. That's about LS all I got. LS in second up. I think that jump's pretty good. It's not as good on the durability patch, I think, but still quite good. He was overperforming before then. I think he's a little more in line now. They still Bear OP character. Uh, it could be a flex, right? I think you know. I don't know if he played it or if he just talked about playing it. Yeah, it could be a flex. Could be a flex. Um, Probably jungle. Same, same as we'll do it. But... Bear Pop gotten a little more play recently than he had for most of the year. R2 Karma. Uh, yeah, also. And they're giving over Senna TK. Alright. So, presumably we have an answer to Senna TK. This feels. Karma Ezreal feels okay, <laughs> I think. Uh, it doesn't feel I great, because they... Senna TK are pretty good at absorbing, uh, absorbing poke, and they win the all in. But. As far as things you could run, I mean, there's there's a lot of lanes that just outright lose to Senna TK, just get rolled over, and I don't really think Ezreal Karma is one of them. Could be wrong, but it feels like an all right, uh, all right enough matchup. I saw an infographic on uh, Reddit today, um, so take that with a grain of salt already. But uh, sure. apparently, Karma's immobilization uh, with RW is the yeah. second longest stun in the game. Or snare. Yeah, it, it's super, it's been that way forever. No one, everyone just whines about Morgana Q. No one is paying attention to Karma Mantra W. Three and a quarter seconds. It's been that way forever. It's pretty OP. You know, it's got the whole you've got to atta stay attached condition right. But fun little part of Karma that thousands of people were made aware of today. They weren't before. Yeah, I knew it was a long time. I didn't feel like it was significantly longer than a lot of those other abilities, but apparently it is. So, yeah, kind of interesting. It is. Uh, Swanye. Swanye feels pretty good, I think. Um, not the highest damage so far from the Goofy Goobers, so Swing should be able to stay alive. And, you know, you've got the Tom Kench and the Wukong characters that he can be amongst vamp up. Uh, and feels pretty good as uh, an R4 because there's also a, a theoretical world where you swap it around. I mean, Here you could realistically, run, you like, could like Swain Karma Top, Swain Support. Yeah, you, I don't think you want to. But there's there's some practical flexibility here, but I don't know that we're actually going to see anything like that. It's more than likely, just Swain Mid, pretty strong in the Silas feels like a natural response. Uh, you get to play with Swain ult, but then you're sightless, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Nar blind put confirms Wukong 100% for jungle, as well as Tom Kench, I guess. They could have done something funny like a, a Wukong Senna, you know, with the Kench top if they wanted. And Renekton gonna be locked in for Yuna, maybe. I didn't think Renekton. about it. Renekton. I don't like that one either. Dude. Okay. The answer. Now, these are, these are Yuna champs. Um,. Those don't feel particularly good in the NAR, though. Hey. I didn't say hey. about their viability <laughs> okay. in the NAR. I said these, these are <laughs> unit champs. Uh, we saw him run it down, well, in, like, the good way. Run it, run it down on him in, on Darius the last time I was here. Kind of ran it down a little bit, actually, if I remember. Um, but it was for a good cause, you know. Yeah. Charity. Um, Still is. Yeah, this is very technically the last series that'll be in June. Uh, I, I believe most of us have agreed. I thought that the break would be, you know, after this week, uh, starting with the 4th of July. But as it turns out, 
Uh, this is just the last series of games before they take a week off, and then we pick up with Platinum on, like, next Thursday. It's kind of weird. Mm. I don't quite sure. understand that, but um, we're tacking on oh, the Platinum the and Gold and games that. for that are on July 7th and July 8th to our June promotion. I think, like, at least over half of us have confirmed that, so... Um, nice. Yeah. Um, so, for some people, this is the last day of our June contribution. For others, we're we're soldiering onward for another three series. But, <laughs> um, yeah, we'll uh, keep an eye on that one. Uh, again, we're donating currently one dollar and sixty-five cents for every um, every Rodham kill, which is pretty cool. And a bunch of people just upped their contribution for pentakills, so we're at like. One hundred and forty-six dollars if somebody gets a pentakill. Oh wow! So, um, <laughs> let's maybe uh, this is it. Root for a pentakill. Maybe this is Yuna's Darius pentakill moment. Pentakill. Maybe that's the big hope. Tons and tons of pentakills just just over and over. Um, looks like there are on the game. Oh, where mill sticks is. Uh, we look at the drafts. Um, I think that if this, depending on how our team's early game goes, I think their team comp will feel fairly decent to play. I mean, there's triple melee on the side of Goofy Goobers, so Swain and Darius are both going to feel pretty decent in team fights. Um, Ezreal is, Ezreal Karma prob is going to be very hard for the side of Goofy Goobers to access, unless they're getting flanked by like a Wukong or a Silas or something. Uh, Volley Bear also loves uh, longer fights where he gets to scrap it out with melee characters and get multiple rotations off. Uh, on the side of Goofy Goobers, you got the Silas pick, which is always, um, all, whenever you lock in Silas, it feels like a champion the game kind of depends on. If your Silas pick doesn't pan out, the game's going to be hard to play, but Swain ult should always be uh, feeling pretty good. Other than that, uh, Volley Bear ult. Is probably his second best. Maybe Karma as real situationally. Um, maybe we'll get to see a big old Silas flying over a wall or something. Uh, Wukong just feels natural. Seneca just strong lane. Nar feels like it should be okay into Darius. I think it's actually scary early before Nar's mini range gets longer. Because Darius kind of outranges him or max or matches his, his range with pull, but should be fairly fairly safe. I think a lot of it's <clears throat> a lot of this game is going to come down to, to Kyle's ability on this Folly Bear, right? To uh, maybe get this Karma Ezreal lane ahead out of lane or get the Swain onto his first item faster or make sure Darius is able to put out pressure against Nar. Because uh, I think if both teams just kind of hang out, I think Goofy Gurus might feel a little bit better in the mid game. But I don't know. It'll be interesting. It feels like uh, it could go either way based on the drafts. Yeah, and that feels like our TM's MO anyway is kind of to have Kyle have a good strong early game. He's been playing a lot of those. I mean, they're the stable meta junglers, but he's put a lot of Wukong. Yeah. Um, just trying to get the boys ahead and comfortable in the game and then, you know, eventually let his carries take over. Yeah. I mean, that kind of feels like the how the jungle's been for a little while now and more organized play it's usually like that like the ninja turtles meme where they're the turtles are all grown up and the turtles are the laners and master what what's his name splinter yes the one that, yeah he i think that's right. he's the jungler I'm not super up to date on my Teenage Hold on. Ninja Turtles. All right, uh, you know, not my best reference, but um... no, it's a great reference. I know the pic like I can picture it. I just okay, yeah. I I don't a hundred percent. I was I was afraid to explain it more clearly because I honestly could not tell you what his name was a hundred percent. So I whatever it it worked out. Um, I had a thought. I lost it. No, Volley Bear's been OP, I think, for a while. Um, people are talking about it like people like it went like 05 in the LCS this past weekend, I think. Volley Bear did, but he. Uh, That's a huge sample size. I mean, the the champs basically Garbo then. 
Yeah, pretty much. Oh, so people were making fun of him a little bit, but um, he is very much an early game focus champ, so when you have these longer games, it can sometimes feel like the champion is less useful later in the game, but uh, he's extremely good in all, all early skirmishes. He loves to walk into your lane and flash on you. He's got great post six tower dives. Um, got a fast clear. There's really nothing, not a lot of weakness to this champion other than the fact that his damage doesn't scale that much later in the game and his CC is only single target on a decent cooldown. Um, which again is, is a later game issue for, for Volley Bear to deal with. Um, I'll help you buy some time. Alright, we got two minutes left. It's week four. Yeah. RTM's 3-0. Um, so looking to continue their undefeated streak. Keep it going. Goofy Goobers though, 0-3. Um, won their first game and then have lost six in a row since then. So uh, looking <laughs> to get back in the W column. Uh, yeah. They've played some wacky team compositions. I, I pulled it up and some of these are a little silly, but I uh, <laughs> haven't had a too much luck with them it seems like so this one feels a little bit more straightforward uh kind of got a lot of priority picks we'll see how well they can execute on it also worth noting is they have a different top laner uh they've been playing with somebody named sivo lubby uh all season and now we got super yacht oh that guy i know that guy too weird i knew that i i shouldn't say i like know that i same deal as like uh, Kenny here. I think I like tried out for their team or something. I don't know. Yeah, I uh, have not Anyways. tried out for any of these teams. So that's crazy. You've uh... <laughs> uh... when when I say I know that guy, it probably means I casted their games. And when you say you know that guy, you, you like played with them or tried out or yeah. Yeah, I like that. Interesting. Uh, do you know what the how many weeks are there? In uh, so ABO. it's a seven week regular season uh, and then they have a placement week um, I'm gonna I'm read this because it's a little weird uh, let me pull up the I had the sheet open and then I closed it because I didn't think I'd need it so let me pull it back open um, yeah so seven week group stage so there are two, two groups of eight uh, top three teams are in the playoffs bottom three teams from each group are eliminated and then there's a one-week play-in stage, which is the fourth and the fifth seeds uh, mm -hmm. play each other. And then eight-team double elim for playoffs, which is kind of neat. Yeah, so there's like, a, there's like a knockout round for the fourth and fifth seeds, and then it's a double elim bracket. Yep. That's so, cool. Actually kind of a cool... Yeah, um, each of the leagues have a very slightly different twist on it, but they're all kind of neat. I, I approve of a lot of the ideas for their, their uh, bracket. I've always... I've wondered why we don't see more double elim brackets it's in amateur it, league. It's because it takes too long. Is the yeah, I think the real but, reason. But but like, if you're trying to figure out who what, the best team is, it, it's what's the, the rush? Right. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, I I don't know. I mean, I think the biggest rush is a lot of teams like to try to pack three splits in to the like regular year, so you have to try to. You know, really slam them through, which usually means you have signups going while playoffs are going, which can be kind of stressful to manage as a tournament organizer. But uh, yeah. that's neither, not my issue anymore. So, you know, I I'm sticking with my guns. What's the rush? I agree. I, mean, I, just I disregard everything you gave me and uh, say it again. I I Hi. know that teams tend to burn out with each other after like ten weeks is another thing that they try to avoid. I always wanted a longer form season where it's like two splits or hell just one mega split just give me a bunch of games with the boys but mm -hmm. i know that there's a lot of teams that would fall apart and forfeit and then you have a bunch of issues so i don't know i have a lot of ideas about tournament organizing but i never want to tournament organize again because community yeah bullshit. well why um, would you <laughs> case in point uh you know the apl chat hello to all of those shitters anyway um <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This is uh, kind of interesting. So it looks like Chad and 
and Yuna are going to go ahead and swap to start out with. And random capitals and Super Yacht are going to trade it back. Uh, if they have rotating caps in their name, you have to say it Ooh. at least once like you're having an aneurysm. Um, yeah, I'll let you... Uh... Do, do I have to? No. It, okay. I was just, like, I... It has to be said on the broadcast just to establish that that's like the correct pronunciation of the name. You can go out. You can go for it after that. But... I'll walk back over the <laughs> second part of the queue. Feels bad. Um, but yeah, jungler starting opposite sides of the map, and yeah, you have the... the double lane swap is uh, interesting. So I think that's really scary for. Uh chat up here in the in the top lane being on this kind of a mobile swain into a silas feels really really vulnerable and it especially feels like your jungler leaving you darius really doesn't want a short lane like i that's probably the yeah. only reason the darius mid has never really been a thing is you just don't have enough room to chase people down we not play, because i think it's you like know, a bad pick you know played darius mid in a in a scrim actually last split yeah. It, went cra it was into like a Yasuo or something. It went crazy. Um, that sounds like a good matchup. I mean, that's yeah. that's like a top lane counter pick matchup. Like that's one I played before. Yeah. When when people play their their fast, you know, do things, click the buttons, champions. You just pick the simplest shit into them and beat the shit out of them. That's what I've learned yeah. from top lane. Uh, it might not work in grandmasters because people are like actually good, but uh, when you yeah. play gold level games, oh. just. Uh, they're doing weird shit. Just slam a Darius or an Urgot and beat them up. It's pretty great. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, big big learnings. Not n applicable to <laughs> anybody who's probably watching this game. But, um, <laughs> you know, we do it. Sure. Uh, yeah. I always feel weird. Um, when I bring analysis points, I'm like, man, am I just really stupid? Is this, no, is this a good I... analysis point? Is this a bad one? Who knows? I, I am not. Uh... <laughs> and then I remember that I they had Remington the Third on. Awake. Yeah. Then they remember they had Remington, they had Remington the, the Third on third. broadcast for eight years. For and years. Don't feel too bad. <laughs> Poor guy. Hey. He's actually a really good Valorant caster. Um, That's kind of his thing, right? FPS yeah. Cast. I was kind of yeah, felt bad for him because it seemed like they just kind of herded him off the broadcast as he got more and more senile, which <laughs> happens, but at least he didn't go off the deep end like Crumbs did. That was... Anyway. I have opinions about LCS talent, and I don't know that they're necessarily shared. Riv did have the best voice. He still has one Everyone's of the best here. voices. Everyone's here top. Uh, Kyle, Red Milk Tea. That's a good E. Uh, gets the pullback with the claw, and... Should help him push the wave in here. Is red milk tea uh, like a normal thing, or is that like not a good color for milk tea? I, I don't have as much experience with milk tea as I probably should. I have almost no experience with milk tea. I'm assuming it... It's like a very Cali thing, right? The milk tea. It, it's got to either be like a... Like Asian and, and California exclusive. An instant classic or pretty pretty wacky if you would name yourself after it, you know? Yeah. Um, so both junglers drop their clear down. Pretty weird, I think. Not weird, but interesting. Um, so they both start, you know, uh, Red Milk T starts bot side. Kyle starts top side. The path away from each other. They do five camps into crab. Uh, Kyle, I, d I didn't really pay attention to what Wukong was doing, but it looked like after his crab, he just sat around for a gank for for some time around mid, made his way up top. By that time, Kyle's already recalled and, and spent his gold and gotten back out on the map. Um, so it's going to be a slight, dare I say the word, tempo um, advantage for Kyle here. Oh. There's the tempo Big, advantage, though. He walks into yeah. mid lane to help shove, and then neither one of them get the cannon. That's that's a tilter. Huge. Yeah, but you, I mean, he's he's just getting to his, his camps before... Um, before Milk Tea is. He's going to be level 5 here at the at the second spawn Skull Crab, which is pretty big. It's actually worth golden experience compared to the first spawn Crab. And we've also seen the double the double reverse flip it and reverse it lane swap. Uh, the mid laners are mid again. Nature is healing. So that's what I was wondering is if they were going to try and switch it back or if they were just going to be comfortable how it is. I think 
I think this works better for uh, Return of the Mill Sticks to be in their in their natural lanes. Yeah, if they can't get the the lane swap off, I think at least having them in the natural positions feels a little bit better for them. Um, yeah. Chad's hit level six. Oh, so does Random Capitals. Not a big deal. Um, yeah, it's uh, relatively even, but you've got the farm lead bottom for Indigo, as you would expect against Senna Tom Kench. And you have a little farm lead brewing in the jungle, as you've highlighted. And that just feels like Kyle's just getting to his camps a little bit faster. And now he's going to get My... to that dragon a little bit faster. Yeah. What? What's your game time right now? I'm just curious. Uh, 707, 08. 09. Okay. I got a weird, like, pause that I didn't ask for. <laughs> oh. I might have to re reconnect to the thing. It just... Oh, wait. No, I think I'm back up. At seven, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting there. Super yacht's gonna be mega in just a second. Actually, Yuna took a lot of poke on that. He's got to be a little careful underneath this tower. I don't think he dies to an show under the tower, but he'd get close. It seems maybe like a risk Super Yacht would not be uh, wanting to take, right? Yeah. No, probably not. And you know, collect that wave and actually maintain his very small CS advantage. Uh, Indigo and Hot Damn Jam have to escape a little bit as Red Milk T has walked into the bottom lane. And that's all that, yep. that's going to happen. Yeah, the oh, no duck Chad ain't looking by random capitals. A lot of damage from capitals, but Chad's fine. He's, he's actually going the he's going the mandate build. Oh. Ooh, the flash of Scon gets the knockup first blood immediately. Um, Red Milk T is able to survive the tower shots. That's pretty clean. They had that uh, timed up really nicely, and Chad can't escape, burn both of his summoners. Well, not both of his summoners. I guess he did burn both of his summoners, because now he doesn't have teleport up. For some reason, I was like, oh, yeah, he respawned and teleported. But no, he had just teleported back, I guess. And now is going to have to take the long walk back to mid lane. Yeah. Good look by Red Milk T and Capitals. A little sad for maybe it's a, a flash predict, but uh, it kind of looks like maybe they, they get a bit lucky on the Silas E connecting there onto Swain to actually finish off, or uh, secure the kill, but good look for Goofy Goobers. Yeah, Kyle's gonna get spotted doing this Herald. Didn't really have any business being there. Um, I... But he's gonna fight his way back in. I don't know who actually has the Herald. It looks like Red Milk T's gonna pick it up. They finish off Yuna on the top side, and this is really sloppy from ROTM now. Chad just trying to kite his way out, but doesn't have Demonic Ascension available. Kyle gonna just fight with Red Milk T. Not quite enough damage. Has to flash in just to try to trade kill, but not gonna really happen, and I guess he's fine with the Blast Plant. But uh, three to zero, and some uncharacteristic mistakes so far from ROTM. Yeah. Uh... Yuna tries to pick Super Yacht when he rotates on the Rift Herald. Uh, doesn't have his Ghost or his Flash available, which, you know, the kind of the Darius experience is you need those things to play the game um, against better players, especially this Phase Rush Nar, which is an uh, interesting choice. I don't know if we talked about it all yet. No. Nope. Um, some nice little tech into the Darius matchup. So he used them both earlier. I think that he actually might have been able to find the kill into Super Yacht, but he autoed a minion after he pulled, which stops him from getting to an appropriate amount of stacks. Um, and then Kyle tried to sneak the Rift Herald, couldn't quite get it. RTM not willing to, to give it up after already committing some time into it and instead trade over a couple kills. Uh, doesn't yeah. feel great, but they're only down 500 gold. Uh, I think in no small part due to just fundamentally decent laning outside of these mistakes, right? Seeing CS leads across the board, it's a, a large CS lead bottom lane. Yeah, that is kind of negated by the fact that it is Senna Tom Kench with the Tom Kench farming, but it's uh, uh, it's starting to balloon to a little... Yeah, it's a little more than you'd expect. Like, you'd expect Senate... 15 to 20, um, but this yeah. is into 30, 35 now, so... Yeah, usually Senna TK is like a net positive in gold just because... Senna and TK's farming, but uh, they're they're down just because the little eight gold from Souls doesn't make up for a thirty CS difference like you might hope it does. I mean, but, yeah. Otherwise, that's uh, 
kind of flawed character and should probably go back into the lamp, like I've said the whole time. Anyway, uh, that's a really good Narsho from Yuna, er, from uh, Super Yacht. Yuna's trying to trade it back. Does the burn actually have enough? It does to trade it back. Now, Hot Damn Jam caught a little bit. Um, oh. Random Capitals with a good roam down. Nicely timed to pitch off the Karma. And Goofy Goobers will grab another kill in the bottom lane. Red Milk T probably here to drop the Herald, you would imagine, as soon as they shove it in, get a little bit more gold onto Lizard, Wizard, and Kenny Master. Or not. There's a teleport coming in. They're actually trying to save this one. Chad, coming on in. Indigo goes in. I don't think they really have a way to engage this. Kyle's a little bit far off. Unless Red Milk T takes a weird path, in which case he does. There we go. No, no. All right. Well, Thought about it. They did think about it. Heal comes out, actually. Uh, Dragon's They're... up right now. That's probably the big consideration for that teleport This from Chad. is really scary, but there's a no Wukong ultimate. Everything else still available aside from uh, Gnarl, right? But he's he's already walking down. He might be getting here before you know. Random Capitals. Yeah, there's going to engage onto Random Capitals. The Dawning Shadow saves him. He gets eaten up by Tom Kench into the back line. Kyle Good trying to make something happen. He jumps over the wall with the Volley Bear ult, but Chad is dead in the front of the fight. Now the Volley Bear on the flank after he jumped over the wall trying to tear apart the Senna. He does get one kill. The True Shot Barrage not doing a whole lot. Indigo trying to kite back. Yuna taking pretty low. Hot Damn Jim trying to kite back away, but Random Capitals is just burning with the Demonic Ascension. It's a double kill for the Silas, and Yuna will get cleaned up on the side eventually, you would imagine, by Super Yacht. I, unless he outplays this? Nope, he's got the Nars show into the wall, and Super Yacht finishes him off. So ROTM loses out on the fight. Now the Rift Herald drop as well. They'll get the Tom Kench in, and Dragon's going to go their way. The Herald's going to crash into the tower for the extra little golden fusion. Goofy Goobers is going to have a pretty decent lead. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's... Team fight felt like it was really saved, to be honest, by... Uh... The Kenny Master land the Devourer onto the Tom Kench during the Swain ult. It's kind of funny, you actually saw he, because uh, the Swain ult keeps going while you're inside Tom Kench, so he just ate him up and walked around in the <laughs> in the enemy team to keep it going. Spits him out the big shield, and what looked like a, it could have been a suspicious start to the fight by Random Capitals turns into uh, a really nice nice fight for the side of Goofy Goobers, I think. Really, uh, really well played. They didn't even have the Cyclone available. They did not get a Gnar ult off. Uh, they still come out on top. And I think a lot of that, I mean, it's close, right? I think mm -hmm. it's just a symptom of some of the early mistakes that our team has made, putting them behind just a little bit too much to really come out on top in a fight like that. Yeah, now some big break points hit. Super Yacht finishes up his Trinity Force. Random Capitals has his Everfrost. On the other side, you have a couple of completions, but they're not the, the big impactful ones. You have an Imperial Mandate now on Chad, and Indigo's finished up his uh, Divine Sunderer, which gives him a little bit more annoying poke, but isn't the big Ezreal power spike just yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of see the uh, like the, <laughs> the the points of strength for, for both teams are kind of defined by how the lanes went, right? The top side all... As Mythic looks strong for the side of Goofy Goobers, then RTM, uh, the Ezreal on the bottom lane is kind of standing out on the team as a potential carry later on. But yeah, This is kind of a weird situation. Nar shows just into the wall to help clear this wave out, but Indigo and Hot Damn Jam are isolated against Nar. You have Darius versus Silas in the top lane, and you have <laughs> Swain solo mid against Tom Kench Senna. But with that roaming, yeah. it's going to be... Uh, second Rift Herald for Goofy Goobers, and Kyle Good has even slid down to try to be even bigger power point for this Ezreal Karma and try to make sure that they can burst down this tower. Yeah, I mean, I think they're just saying we can't fight the Rift Herald, which is a correct assessment. You can sit here and let as much of this wave die as they can, finally get them knock it down. Uh, cause you can't fight the Rift Herald anyways, so don't bother. I worry that they're overcommitting. I mean, they... Their bottom lane can't just recall from this position, right? So there's... Or they can. I was going to say, that this is an angle for Goofy Goobers if they wanted to just to just break it up in mid. Instead, they're going to look for the top side camps. Find a nice little advantage there. Turbo Camp Tank going to be finished up for Kyle. Uh, and Eunice Stride Breaker now? Yeah, there it is. So. Yeah, so hit some uh, important item break points, but... Yeah, and this now feels like a time... Once our team can get back on the map and get a little bit of control, this feels like a time where you could 
start looking for a fight because you are down about 2,000 gold, but when you check the inventories, um, this looks like about as good of a fight as you're ever going to get, right? Uh, the bottom lane with the side of Giffy Goober is going to back and spending here might change that. It Senna's not going to finish up her Mythic, though. She's sitting on 900 and actually just skips over a Mythic again to head for some heal debuff. She's also she's going... Doing the the Kraken Slayer build is what it looks like. Plus Berserker a little, is kind of weird, right? Which ma makes some sense, right? You're into the Volibear, Swain, Darius, but I think the consensus is that the Eclipse build is just... It's cheaper just kind of and about the same amount of damage, is my I, understanding. Yeah, the, I think... The big uh, advantage is, like, it's 2,000 gold cheaper, the whole build, which isn't yeah. insignificant. Uh, you going to do a lot more damage on every individual auto than you will with Kraken Slayer. You're just with Kraken Slayer. You're get, in a world where you're just getting a bunch of free autos off, which I guess is what they're playing for with Lethal Tempo Senna. Uh, then maybe Kraken's better, but Drake's going to spawn here in a minute. Red Milk T hanging around mid. They're going to probably look to drop this Rift Herald to kind of knock down the mid tower, maybe assert themselves, uh, gain priority. RTM not giving it up. It's kind of a weakness of Senna Kench is their wave clear is not that great. I think it's a weakness of Goofy Goober's team comp in general. Um, oh, wow, oh, that's a kill. That's... Maybe? I, he did stack that all the way up. Tick. Yeah, um, oh. that's a shutdown. That's a solo kill for Yuna. Uh, props yeah, well to him for knowing how much fucking damage that did, but um, Jesus, that didn't feel like it should have been a solo kill. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's just gonna bust open that tower in top lane and now ROTM, do they win the 4v4 is maybe a question. And they have to worry about Super Yacht will have teleport when he reses. Yeah, I, so this I is kind of a scary so. moment. Yeah. I don't think so, simply because... Uh, I, I'd, I'd actually almost like if they'd flirt with it a little bit more. See if they can maybe get the TP out from Super Yacht and open up Yuna on the top side. But um, just going to settle for some mid-priority to let them reset or ward up or whatever they choose to do after the drake trying to move on like it never even existed yeah wukong and silas are both down on the bottom side gonna get one tower and start you know forcing that minion wave in toward a second so trading objectives across the map but rtm's inching closer and closer in the gold count that we're behind about two and a half thousand gold now one thousand so indigo has no mana he just has nothing <laughs> he's probably <laughs> Sorry, pretty He's pretty close Funny to, to me. Funny to me how how little he had. Yeah, he's about a hundred gold off, I think. Maybe more actually. On double longsword. Gonna yeah. stay. Kyle has to get sped up out of there. They're gonna crash Sheila into the uh, tower in mid lane. This might be the power play for Goofy Goobers. They've rotated everyone into mid lane. We have started the NA ram. Well, Ezreal. And I mean, this is the, the no mana, mana yeah. situation. I mean. They might be able to clear this. Uh, Yuna's fine. He's just going to walk it on out. They lose the mid tower, but nothing else, which yeah. honestly feels fine for that. Yeah. Feels like if we... And yeah, I mean, he was so close to his, his man. I mean, he stacks up an extra longsword and stuff, 300. Um, feels like maybe preventable. If, if we just reset a little bit earlier before all of Goofy Goober is able to get to mid, but uh, not bad. Not the end of the world. Now, but the thing is for our TMC, we've given up the second dragon, but I don't know if we really... I mean, you had a solo kill top, right? And the, into top waves taken and, and subsequently lost by Goofy Goobers. Chad's going to get looked on here, though. Yeah, a lot Chad of things coming out. getting collapsed on has to... Flash over the thick part of the wall. Doesn't Dyrus flash? Nicely done. Uh, the bike sure. is out of there. And he's gone. Um, but getting that is going to bring them slightly back in line with gold because that's the the idea of giving dragon right. It's not just not just deciding not to find not to fight it, which I mean is step one, right? Is identifying that you will start losing harder if you do fight it, but uh, trading gold on the other side of the map, right? So that you can be better prepared for the next trick, maybe. 
I don't capitals, I don't think he wins, wins this. Oh, he, he does. Okay, well, somebody is dying, and it's going to be Yuna first. Chad now trying to make something out of this one. Red Milk Tea is just spinning on him. Now Super Yacht's here. Chad uses the Demon Flare, but it's not quite enough damage. Pulls in Super Yacht. He is dead eventually to the Super Yacht himself, and the Goofy Goobers get two kills out of a play that I don't think RTM really needed to go for. They're going to try to get some damage on this mid lane tower. Indigo gets knocked up. Lizard Wizard. Oh, that's a eat used onto Indigo. Now they're looking for the Tom Kench. Kenny getting chunked through still has his gray health. I can't tell how much gray health he has because I'm colorblind, but he's got some for sure. So yeah. He'll be fine. He's got plenty. Uh, Yuna, so Darius 1v1 against Silas feels pretty good most of the time unless Silas is just... Way too fed simply because when Silas takes Darius ult, um, he can't stack it up. So he always gets minimum damage Darius ult. Um, so by that logic, Darius should win the fight most of the time. That's why I was like, oh, no, he wins this. He then, definitely won the 1v1, but there, yeah, were, there were two Random other Capitals yeah. cheated and had his homies arrive. A little, little goofy. Some of those goobers showing up. Um, the Rylai's finished up here for Chad. Yeah, Chad's forced to use the Demonic Ascension, trying just to get some damage down. Does get the pull in onto Senna, but now uh, with Red Milk Tea here, he's in a lot of trouble, and there's not really too much help coming for him. Uh, Kyle couldn't quite decide who he wanted to hit, and now with the Demon Flare up for him and Random Capitals, it's full retreat for ROTM. Indigo still biding his time. Yuna hanging out over the wall. Could just ghost in really fast and try to find a pull if he wants to, but that's about as much use as he's going to be on the yeah. flank. They've got Dragon spawning in 30 seconds. Uh, there's no Swain TP available, and Swain's not going to even respawn until the same timing as the Dragon. Oh, and the Nar show into the wall. Gets the pin onto Kyle Good. Really just shouldn't Ooh. be there, it feels like. Hot Damn Jam's going to fall a double kill for Super Yacht. And again, RTM just feels really uncharacteristically sloppy today. I'll call yeah, him out. Uh, it definitely feels like some of the mistakes you make when... Oh. Maybe another one. Uh, Yuna, yep. Gonna get taken down, and Indigo gonna have to arcane shift over the wall. Doesn't quite get knocked up by the Tom Kench. Two shot barrage isn't enough to finish off anything, and now uh, what was just a couple of picks has turned into the full Mo Morbius sweep. Yeah. It, I was going to say, it feels like the kind of... Oh, they, it's over? <laughs> Wait, I just sped up to live. <laughs> Did they forfeit? Oh. I didn't know I was that far behind. I I didn't either. I just noticed that I was, so I sped up. Huh. <laughs> oh. All right. That's uh that's a forfeit game one. <laughs> that's um, a, I was, it to me it feels like some of the mistakes we're making right there, characteristic of coming into the game. You're three zero. The other team's zero three. You think uh, we're gonna come in. It's going to be better. It's going to be easy. And then here we are, 24 minutes in. Made sloppy mistakes and decide, you know what? We'll just next it. Save save any any mental in this game that is going to side lead the way of viewers and just move on and uh, clean up a lot of their stuff from this game and come out stronger in 2 and 3. Uh, still a, a bit surprising to me on the 4th build, but I uh, can't ever... Can't judge their personal decision on that too harshly. Don't know what it, what things are like in the situation room. Yeah, I mean it's definitely a difficult position to play out of, regardless. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't disagree with it necessarily. We're at a solo queue game. I'm probably out of there. Competitive. Yeah. You know you can make your own judgment, but um, yeah. We'll uh, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. They are much better players than I am. You don't have to. They're, you can judge uh, them fully if you want to. They're probably their internet cafe is closing, and so they have to get in the next game faster. Ooh, so now they're taking the OP blue side. Right. Oh, well, that's what it was. They just they just needed to get to blue side faster. Finally, the legendary. Even higher than 51% win right now. Blue side. It's 
stocks are so high. It's a real stock situation. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of stuff in that game felt like I I won't I'm trying to think of the right word. I won't use the word obvious. Um, that seems harsh. But I don't know, so may, you, you already said sloppy may sloppy is yeah is the best word for something. Just just a bit uh a bit silly. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. They, the kind of things that you you know better. Yeah. Scram said for charity. I don't know if that was the most charitable. I mean, the the three kills not really doing a whole lot to move the needle there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey. You know, that's probably what it was. They couldn't stand to be in this game not raising money for charity any longer, so they had to just quickly get to one where they could raise money for charity. Yeah, it happens. I think we, uh... Last split, we... I don't know if you remember, we came out and just got basically perfect we actually I think we did get perfect game in like game one of a, a series <laughs> yeah by uh <laughs> yeah by I, a team I, that wasn't at the top of the standings uh, I, I do yeah remember they, that. they were they were doing that great and then they just perfect game does and you're like what the heck um but the mental was was strong. Came back in game two, whipped into shape by the guys that we played against. Um, it'll be interesting to me to see if there's anything as far as draft that they feel like they need to change up, um, or if it's just some of the the freebies that it felt like they kind of lobbed over. If they if they have what it takes to say, let's just not do those things five head and we'll be fine uh, obviously there are blue sides the draft's going to look a little bit different um, but yeah I don't know I'm sure they got it with the inspiring words of twitch.tv slash lolljss Do you want to give us the the lol JSS pep talk? What, what's going on in the chat right now? I don't. Uh, I just remember being in Champion Select and him being like, you know, it's like the sixth game in a row where he's like, Davis, I hate to say it, but Jarvin looks pretty good here. And so then we lost. <laughs> that, that's all I remember. <laughs> he looks like a Jarvin game. Sitting there prepping draft. Okay. If they pick Threshophilios, we have the counter. Jarvin in the jungle. Like, okay. Yes, sir. What? Looking. Uh, nearly, uh, nearly PG coach. Looking for Jarvin one trick for jungle. <laughs> will accept Jarvan Trundle two tricks. <laughs> Man, I if you look me up, if you look at my OPGG, I played like four games of Jarvan this season in solo queue. It was all it was all fabricated for uh, for Dara Academy.
Didn't the Masters team play Kane last week? Um, or am I making that up? Is that a scrim that I'm thinking of? I don't remember. Jared posted oh, I a screenshot, and I, I thought it was match day. I don't think I cast a screenshot, week. and I think it was them. Maybe I thought it was them picking. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh no, they did pick Kane. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. the heck, Jared? Ah. Uh, <laughs> Kyle gets to play Kane. <sighs> He's a uh, Viego Leeson, Wukong Wukong, Volibear Kane Wukong. So, and now we're yeah. on Volibear. So, four Wukongs, two Volibears, a Kane and a Viego. And we a played Leeson. one Kane game in scrims. We won. We never went back. Uh, Mod lower pulled out the top lane Kane. Uh, in the gold game this week. So. Oh, how'd it go? Uh, he won that game. They didn't win the other games, but they won that one. So. Oh, did they pick Kane top again in the other games? Unfortunately, no. They probably would have won that. That's probably why they, yeah. It was a Kane top uh, angle, and they refused. <laughs> We're in a draft for game number two, by the way. I we put it up draft. on screen. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, so. I was I'm not, like, Yasuo... neglecting my job as producer while also neglecting my job as caster. <laughs> only, only one at a time, not both at the same time. Um, we made Graves, already which is the same, oh, but actually, Yasuo's different. Draven's the same. The order is just different right now for RTM. It's the same first two bands. Yasuo, Renata, if things follow suit, we're going to have a Jinx ban and a Seraphine ban coming through here on the last two. That's a weird looking Kench. Jinx. Yeah. That's a funny... Jinx indeed. I'm surprised they didn't take away the Senna unless they intend to uh They probably want it. They probably want goofs the goofs to ban it. I appreciate that Yuna's just now posting the draft link. That I think it's somebody for Kyle, has gone through uh who just joined. five bans and <laughs> didn't have the draft link. It's Wu Kong actually is the ban. Uh leave Senna up. And now means that I don't even know can. who you are, Smurder. 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 Nine forty-two. I'm assuming you're Smitty, but I don't know for sure. <laughs> um, Viego, first Whoa. pick. That's a different juggler. That is enterprising, I think, with Polybear up on the table. Senna still in the game. Senna Seraphine locked in for Cubers. Yeah, this is kind of what I was expecting them to do. If you if you don't blue one the Senna and you felt like the Senna lane was a pro or I, I don't see why Goofy Goobers would go away from the Senna lane. Seraphine Seraphine Senna may be stronger than Kench Senna uh, on current patch. Samira uh, it so it's not it's good into a Seraphine. I mean, it has serious range issues, right? But it can block her entire kit, so that's nice. Um, and Senna Seraphine, pretty squishy characters, both can get run over by Samira later in the game. Uh, Senna is more of a traditional Samira counter, though. Uh, her auto attacks and Q, I think, go don't get blocked, and she just has a, a range advantage and a sustain advantage. Pretty good at poking Samira out of lane, making things difficult for her. Samir Nautilus is going to be locked in for our team, so looking for some aggression on the bottom side. And there's the Folly Bear as the Viego response. Maybe, maybe locked in. This They should lock it in. Yeah, that, uh, it feels like this is the choice. Like, this is the only tier one jungler yeah. left in this game, right? He's much better jungler than Viego, I think. Uh, after the nurse, Viego received this patch. Folly Bear, I think, wasn't really touched at all and was already at top tier. Uh, and already has, uh, if you believe solo key win rates, he's just historically, historically has a good win rate against Viego. Uh, just wins the early game matchup pretty decently. Uh, but if you're RTM, or you have the Viego, you have the Samir, you have the Nautilus. So, things you're looking for, maybe a slightly longer range 
for AoE engage to really help access this Senna Seraphine. Nautilus ult probably isn't going to be enough, depending on what Goofy Goobers does here in R4 and R5. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if they just pick some characters that can, if they essentially just throw up a wall of Bruiser in front of the Senna Seraphine. Do you want uh, to see, kind of... like, a, in terms of things Chad is playing, would that be like a Vigar, a Xerath, something like that? Is what you're looking for, or uh, something? I don't know. Something, something more traditional, like a Syndra or an Oriana, maybe. I mean, depending on what Goofy Goobers locks in right here, I could almost say. Um, Swain. I was gonna say maybe you could go like an Azir or something. Uh, but if they lock in this Swain, I mean, maybe you still could, but I, I think it's going to be a good-looking Silas game. Um, assuming Chad and Young plays that. So you've got the Swain, and you're basically just going to get to take the opposite end of the matchup that you played last game. Uh, but you also have a Seraphine ult available to you, which is notoriously pretty good for Silas. So it's already a better Silas game than the last game was, as far as draft. I think at that point, you're just struggling with range, and I think... Vigar is a fine answer to that. Yeah. Really stops up the engage from Goofy Goobers. Difficult for Volley Bear to, to navigate Cage without his ultimate available. And even then, just ulting over Cage usually is not that great. Because <laughs> uh, then where's the rest of your team going to go? Yeah. Uh, good at zoning off characters like Sinus Seraphine. I mean, they usually play in friggin' Narnia anyways, but he can do it. And he has a lot of damage to back it up. And it seems like a decent matchup into the Swain. If you're a blind here, I don't know how much I like. Um, yeah, Yuna's feel... really going for it. Yeah, he is. Uh, it it feels like this top blind might have been what's what should be tying this team together. Uh, when you've got a Viego, a Samira, you've got you know reset champs looking for big team fights. You've got a Vigar, you know, bring in the magic damage profile and some zone control. Uh, it feels like where you would naturally want to lock in and Orn is banned, right? He's played a Scion this year. Yeah, but like a, a fan of that. A Scion or a, I don't know, a something, a Gragas maybe. Yeah, uh, and Bjorn he's played really... both of those, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm looking at the sheet right now. He's played both yeah. Scion and Grace, so... Yeah, but Dior feels really odd to me. It's going to be into the Gnar again, so... I think a slightly better matchup for Fiora than, than the Darius... Or a slightly harder matchup for Gnar than Darius is. Uh, especially as it scales later into the game, but... It'll be interesting to see how this pick plays out. Yeah, we're Frankly. waiting for everybody to get into order here. Um, looks like we're waiting on Goofy Goobers to get their support to get into the correct spot. There he goes. I'll be honest, this is my least favorite part of competitive play. It's just how long it takes to get from game to game. Yeah. Um, I yeah, just it's put not great. Something on screen, and I don't know. Hmm? Huh. Did I break? I broke the overlay. That's pretty impressive. Good for me. Uh, well done. Thank you. Uh, well, don't I... worry. No rush. <laughs> no race. You got time. I'm actually pretty impressed by whatever I just did. Um, oh, I wonder if what I dragged earlier was the... Huh. Can I, like, send this to center? Hmm. 
center to screen. Did that do anything? No. Okay. It's actually just not detecting my client right now. Huh. That's neat. I wonder if OBS broke or if the lead client broke. So either one is like kind of like me. Well, imagine there's a second draft happening right now. Because um, there is. Yeah. They're loading in. Well, they're not loading in. They're finishing the second round of bands. Ah. Okay. Nothing crazy is happening. No one is like... I found it. I did they're, move They're it. not doing like Swain Senna with Seraphine Man or anything. I figured it out. Or anything quirky. I got it back. We did it. I really need to hire a production person. And by hire, I mean I don't have any money, so I need somebody to want to sacrifice their time. But that's not going to happen, so here we are. Um, occasionally I just break things. Jared in another channel said it's on his laptop his parents and his internet was being weird so he asked someone to draft and he told them just pick Seraphine or Senna I don't care which one <laughs> <laughs> and now here we are <laughs> just pick Seraphine or Senna and they pick Viego <laughs> assume <laughs> assume hey uh, see, if they told him that, and like they had misheard and picked Samira, which is like the amalgamation of those two names, like I could see that. But uh, yeah, they 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 got Viego out of that, so a little unlucky, I guess. Sure. It's yeah. basically the same champion, honestly. It's one of those. Yeah, I. I... Oh, we just started a three minute delay. For whatever reason I felt like we're about to load in. No, no, we there's no way that we get that lucky to ever just No, I I really hope uh RTM cleaned it up from last game. <laughs> Where because they uh you know, we, we already mentioned some uncharacteristic mistakes in game one. Uh they're going to be afforded a lot less room for those kinds of mistakes, I think, in this game. Draft I will say it's probably Goofy Goober's favorite. <laughs> uh, they seem to just be stacked with priority champions who have good early game, good lane phase, great team fighting. You're definitely going to have to find your find your small mistakes if you're RTM. Find find your angles to uh, to get ahead in this game. It's going to be really important that you're able to for someone to to get an early foothold, whether it's the Fiora, the Diego, the Bygard, the Samira, any of them that can do it has a good chance of taking over in this game, but you're gonna have to play it pretty tight, pretty yeah. clean. And you gotta get there, which is mm -hmm. probably the harder part, because you don't have, like, Samira Nautilus could probably engage early on and, and maybe pick up a cheap kill or two, but Vigar Fiora, not a... Not exactly known for their solo kill prowess early on. Viego, as you've mentioned, has this little uh, difficult time dealing with the volley bear, so you have to try to get away from the volley bear to find plays. It'll be interesting well, to see how they can navigate that. Viego has to get resets to, to win team fights. I legitimately do not know who he is going to kill on this team. Uh, at least in the early parts of the game, in any team fight. You're not going to chunk through Senna Seraphine shields and heals. You're probably not going to be able to take down Swain through his ult. You're probably not going to be able to kill Folly Bear. Like, it, it feels like if Goofy Goobers just groups up post 6 and takes their fights how they want them, it's going to be really hard for Return of the Mill 6 to do anything about it. They're going to have to find, find advantages on their own terms. So. So, uh, tough task. For the Masters team to try to keep their undefeated season alive. I don't know that it's like that hype because this is literally the halfway point right now at this game. Um, mm -hmm. But still, you know, that's relatively impressive. Going three weeks undefeated. You take those. 
Yeah, that's better than better than us. Zero weeks undefeated, which yeah. is where Goofy Goobers has been up until potentially today. So, be interesting. Things for sure. I am. I said one thing's for sure. I was going to say this is going to be a, a long night of casting, but I guess I that was that is not for sure. That was me. Like, hopefully, it is. That was me <laughs> assuming that there's a game three. Um, yep, it's. Uh... If I wanna, if I wanna be happy, I'm gonna have to be here a while. <laughs> It's a tough ask. Um, Indigo opted for cleanse in the bottom lane. Um, probably not without reason, right? Mm -hmm. Well, sorry, I uh, I was eating a chip, not to rub it in or anything. What, what kind of chips we got? Yeah, just a barbecue Pringle. Barbecue Pringle? That's a classic. I, I was looking for like the Lay's stacks, you know, mm -hmm. the barbecue. They're, they're off-brand Pringles, because those are actually better, I think, the barbecue ones, but couldn't find them, so I had to settle. Oh, yeah, and I'll tell you, Indigo has cleanse because Kenny Masterlin has exhaust. That's what it's... Uh, it's kind of the, the ADC meta on certain champions like Samira and Tristana is you, you run cleanse... Because getting exhausted means you can lose a team fight, straight up. Uh, especially with Tristana, you know, where so much of her damage in early lane and her all-in potential comes from her bomb explosion. Uh, if you run exhaust and you just exhaust her when she jumps in, she loses so much damage. So, Tristana's and Samira's frequently, or you know, Samira, you just exhaust her when she's ulting and her team wipe potential goes so far down. Mm -hmm. Um... If you're able to have cleanse, then you can cleanse the exhaust. And then you can keep doing your pop-off like nothing ever happened. Who was the other Fiora we saw? Was it Mason? Well, I'm not going to get to think about that at all. Uh, Lizard Wizard's taking pretty low Indigo and uh, Hot Damn just going to go in level 1. Why not get three summoner spells out for their Ignite? That feels pretty good uh, mm -hmm. in terms of a little bit of... Uh, you hate the tempo word, but like they have that lane advantage now because of that. Um, this is a kill. Uh, there's really nowhere for Kenny to go. Oh, it's level two to stay alive, but uh, that's not their side <laughs> of the map. So this probably I think it will just be well. a little silly and sad. Oh, there's a level two for Indigo. Dash is on through for first blood. So already uh, quite a bit different from game number one, and I really like the early advantage for the bottom lane. Indigo and hot and uh, jam. I keep wanting to shorten his name and then realize that it's not any shorter if I go start with Hot Damn. Um, hot Damn. Hot Damn. That. Um, any hot shorter damn for hook. Jam, but uh, I forgot what I was saying. I... Fuck Mondays, man. Um, Ooh, this day just Kyle. shouldn't exist. Scared me. Kyle? Um, I was going to reset his red. Forfeit the game if that occurs. I think we're at different times again. That's new. Oh. We're just what, what's your game time? 323? 24? 25? I'm at 27, 28. Okay. I didn't see I, the red buff. I, maybe I just wasn't paying attention. I, I, I did just uh, speed up a little bit. Kyle, okay. he has a level advantage, but he still doesn't really win this with the Volley Bear. I mean, yeah, he's, Kyle he's just... just eating a bunch of damage. Jam going to go in. They'll get a big chunk onto Kenny Master Lin, but Indigo gets taken down. And... Nautilus is the only one with a health bar left at this point, just trying to kite his on, way on through, but not going to go very well for him as Indigo falls. Good target selection, I guess. They were able to to make sure that they were pumping all their damage onto the Samira during that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it was a chip. I'll stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, I mean, they're right there when... Talk about the, the power of Volibear into Viego. I mean, Kyle opts for the full clear, the safe clear, gets a level 3 advantage, or he gets level 4 versus level 3 advantage. Doesn't matter. Red Milk T is just basically taking him like 100 to 20 him. Not 100 to 0, but 
pretty like pretty much yeah. just solo kills him at the bush. It means that he can't be effective in the fight. Like he can't dive yeah. back in. He can't do anything. So yeah, and, you didn't and get there's the gold almost no damage returned him. onto the volley bear, right? Yeah. So it's a uh, extremely winning for for Goofy Goobers there. Who, the kill did go over to Red Milk T, so going to continue to have some time to snowball on the volley bear. Um, not going to hurt the bottom lane a little bit really too much they're still in a favorable you know the solo kill into a favorable lane state meaning they're they're uh <laughs> still up cs still up a good chunk of gold and xp down in the bottom lane but i don't know i better better than last game already it feels yep uh yuna just trying to push this wave back against the gnar they're relatively even up there pretty even in mid so just the the differences in the bottom lane in the jungle right now, but RTM still somehow have almost a thousand gold lead just off of that bottom lane play it feels like, and they're out to a scuttle crab, but they don't have a jungler with them, so you have to be a little bit careful right now. There's not even a scuttle crab there. Oh, they're just chilling in river, having they're a. They're just playing among us. No, Skull Crab is, uh, is top lane, I think. I don't think Kyle ever went up and cleared the top crab, and uh, did Red Milk Peace. That's just the first spawn crab. It is going to get one shot at some point. Kyle's sitting down the bottom lane looking for a lane gank. I'm going to choose to stay. I like the patience, actually, a lot. He actually levels up to six here off of the minion wave. Hopefully... Okay, so he's not going to get spotted there if he does choose to play up, but I think... Uh, Lizard Wizard and Kenny Masterlin, right? They know Viego's how what his clear has been. They should be able to effectively track Kyle to the bottom side of the map while they're doing that dragon. The fact that they haven't seen him in a while and they have no vision of the bush means they uh, stand back under tower, just let the wave crash, respect it. It's going to be a good lane, free reset for Indigo and Hot Damn Jam, and uh, that little hover from Kyle I think should let them just continue to afford control over this lane. And both junglers back on their blue buffs. Super Yacht's going to walk in and spot Kyle Good doing his blue buff. So, full, full, vi well, full knowledge, I guess. Not necessarily full vision for Goofy Goobers. They know Kyle's up there on the top side of the map. They know roughly what camps he's clearing. So, yeah. shouldn't be too much of a surprise for anybody on Goofy Goobers for him to show up. As far as Kyle and Red Milk, um... The Volley Bear doesn't do, didn't drop a full clear down before he went and took the Dragon. So while they have the same amount of CS, same amount of camps available pretty much at the moment, uh, Kyle should come out on top here simply because he cleared more of, if, if that makes sense, he cleared more of his camps, so more of his camps have respawned at a higher level. Uh, if Red Milk T goes to his Krugs, they're still going to be like level 3 Krugs. Uh, Actually, Kyle's going to be looking for the Rift Herald. Yep, Kyle with and Chad Red Milk and Yuna. path was a little sporadic, or not sporadic, but a, a little difficult to track around that dragon time. So they might have lost him. They might not know that he's right here. It doesn't look like there's going to be any contest from Goofy Goobers, or if they even really know this Rift Herald's happening. Yeah, they they probably have an idea because the Vigar's off the map now, and they don't see him in bottom lane. Uh as random capitals had walked in and got some vision. They see all those bot camps have spawned, and, I mean, now they've heard the Herald go off, so they know what Kyle was doing, but we're uh, we're still just chilling along. This is so... Farming Red Mopti... Oh my goodness. So their bottom lane is thinking they need to push because they think Indigo and Hot Damn Jam might have rotated to the red buff. Uh, it is going to go over to Red Mopti. Yeah. Kyle walks in. Kyle, looking for it, has uh, to use his Heartbreaker over the wall. Red Milk can't really chase him, but that might set up a bad situation for Chad. Yuna in the top lane just getting beat up by Super Yacht. Now he's got the zoomies from the phase rush. A couple more autos, gets the hop over. One more auto. Oh, good parry time. He had that back up. So uh, not going to die, and Chad sees the Volley Bear again. Um, that's a really interesting position on that cage. Uh, that's... <laughs> All right, excuse me. It's the, the, the extra couple of tower uh, shots. Positioning for the cage, yeah. Um, Gets him in right under tower. All right. And now Chad and Young has the red buff. 
Uh, that feels great. Yeah. It's like exactly the kind of uh, thing you're hoping you get away with in a game like this one. Random Capitals is also going for the Imperial Mandate build. It's kind of interesting. Weird. Uh, maybe it's maybe I'm just out of the loop because I know it's a thing. I didn't know if it was like the thing, you know. Oh, yeah, this I, is really scary for raw TM. Yeah, little dive here onto the Seraphine Senna, but they're still level five. In comes Red Milk Tea though. They have a teleport coming through. Kyle Good picks up one kill, jumps into the. Senna, I don't think that that's exactly what he wanted to do, and he's not going to be able to get out. It's a double kill for the Seraphine underneath tower, and Super Yacht off of the teleport. Picks off Jam as well, so one for three on the tower dive for our TM, and Goofy Goobers getting a lot of gold in their pocket off of that play. Yeah. Uh, just felt like maybe a little bit over force, maybe we didn't do our full scouting report on that play to decide whether it was safe. Uh, NAR teleports down. It is going to result in a CS advantage and some plates picked up for Yuna. So the top lane gold is going to be about equalized off that play. It's in danger here. Slow on mana. Doesn't have enough to cast Grand Challenge and fight it out. Going to be able to back it up, though. Um, but it feels like maybe we... Wow. Chad and Young is doing a lot of damage. Yeah, At least that's what it looks like. Oh, the hex flash over the wall from Jam. Not quite able to find the target. But they do see the Volley Bear on the other side. Looking to scrap it out, but the Dawning Shadow comes in. Hook lands. Volley Bear can't quite get over the wall. A little wow. too thick, but a big Seraphine ult. Turns that one around. Kyle, really low. The Demonic Ascension isn't quite enough to finish him off, but finally does. Chad going to fall as well. And it's just not going ROTM's way tonight. Indigo kiting around, but it doesn't matter. It's a double kill, and the room times again paying benefits for Goofy Goobers. They're able to collapse with four, and it just seems like all of these odd-numbered scraps have gone Goofy Goobers' way. Yeah, well, I... It, it feels like on this play and on the Rift Road play, I mean, it, it's, it's a little too... Uh, it's a little too... I'm trying to think of the right word. I don't want to say like forced or, or hectic, but it doesn't feel like RTM is really assessing the risks of plays that or the plays that they're going for. It kind of feels like we are just going for it, and then um, it's working or it isn't. Rift Herald's going to get dropped up here in the top lane, uh, trying to eject a little bit of cash into units, see if they can win the split push battle. Chad and Young's uh, caught out here. Yeah, now it doesn't flash. have cage. Oh, that's a well timed flash to get over the wall, but. I always have to stop being impressed. Like, you watch gold games enough, and that's a good play. That's, that's like a top-tier play from uh, some of those gold games, but you have to kind of expect it, it almost. It, it's from the... standard. It's uh, a lot the situations like that are, are solved in, at this level of play, right? And it, this is just the natural what's supposed to happen, and then it happens, and then it's normal. <laughs> Oh, nice um, hook. oh, that's a really nice hook, actually. Yeah, that's uh, just a dead lizard wizard. <laughs> no more AP Renekton. Lizard wizard. Isn't that... What is that? King Gizzard and the lizard wizards? Or am I, th am I making that up? Is it something else? I'm not sure about that reference. Okay. But I'm I, also neither not, am I. Not neither am it. I. They, they keep changing it, and I don't know what it is, is anymore. But Yeah, I I don't know if that reference is really with it. No, it's a band. Scrambles, hope, hope. Scrambles is with you. Okay. Uh, it wasn't actually a band that I listened to, but it was something that I had some friends in high school that they uh, talked about talked about it a lot, mostly for the, for the name, I think, more than anything. But... Yeah, that sounds like my group of friends in high school and the butthole surfers that was apparently a band <laughs> yeah um, oh stun over the wall oh, gets the that's double a lot stun of damage. yeah seraphine should be dead off of that one donning shadow might save no primordial burst the big outplay from chad who also happens to be young oh at the same God. time but red milk tea just doesn't care he's going to jump on the nautilus and take him yeah. down he wanted to kill hot damn jam uh, that's 600 gold shutdown in Chad and Young's pocket. I think feels really good if you're RTM. 
and the volley barrel comes out should give you some priority on the uh, on the Rift Herald. I think they are going to be able to just pick it up here. Kind of the real hope is that you can. Oh, they are maybe going to rotate with the Swain. The real hope is that you can pick up this Rift Herald relatively uncontested and swing it into the the third dragon of the game. Pick it up for yourself. Super yachts headed down. This is. Uh, starting to get a little scary now for ROTM. Random Capitals is here. Gets the pullback. Chad really doesn't have anywhere left to go. Throws down the cage, but just to prevent his friend Kyle Good from dying. And it's oh. another good collapse from Goofy Goobers. They pick up another kill. They can get a little push in mid. They're still down kills, or down gold, though, I should say. Chad and Young. Crown of the Shattered Queen. That feels so bad. Lot of damn. <laughs> he's he's uh, fine. Yeah. Wait, he's just gonna a walk back in there. Silly. What is happening? Goes for the red buff. Uh, I don't know why we wouldn't opt for the Everfrost into this Volibear and Swain. Make it impossible for Volibear to really play the game. Uh, Electro Maryland butthole surfers? I, I'm Garf gonna be honest. To so, Butthole Shambles. Surfers was just popular because it was one of the tags at the media play. It just said Butthole Surfers on it. It was very funny. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of words together that don't make a whole lot of sense. But, um, sorry, you were making an actual, like, analytical point. But uh, I just think uh, I disagree with the Vigar build. But uh, I'll leave that to, to Chad. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. It's Chad and Young's turn... Mom said it's his turn to build items on Vigar, so whatever he goes for. All right, here's I'll the play you were talking about. Immediately the Rift Herald into mid. They're going to get the dead Swain. They're trying to kill the Swain, but he's got a stopwatch just in time. They'll finish off the tower. In wow. comes the Dawning Shadow as well. They can just buy time. The Swain is invincible on the backside of this fight. Yuna oh, can't finish man. him off either. And now RTM is overcommitted for this. Encore not going to matter, but... Um, Hot Damn Jim eventually will fall. It's a triple kill for the Volley Bear. That fell apart very quickly for ROTM. Oh, yeah. I The stopwatch I expected, I did not expect him to to heal that much in his stopwatch. <laughs> I mean, what that felt like a my team Swain, enemy team Swain moment. I swear that was one of the, some of the most healing I ever... I guess he was already level 11 going in that fight, but... Plus the Seraphine, Gosh. plus the Seraphine. Yeah, and the, and the Seraphine ult comes over, or the Senna ult comes over the top when he when he gets out of his stopwatch to make mm -hmm. sure he stays topped off. But And then they have I the Seraphine and it, the Senna heal on top of it. Like They yeah. have a lot of healing on that team. Even the like the Volibear has some healing. Technically, and the I mean, Gnar, when he turns Mega, is healing. So um, In these fights, you can see, I mean, the, it was extremely close. Being good play, they almost were able to just blow up random capitals. Uh, the Rift Herald did a kindly favor and knocked him into the Vigar cage. But if you can't get a reset on the target that you're using your burst on, specifically your your Vigar ultimate, and your Viego and your Samira can't reset, oh Kyle, gonna dodge out of everything. Flash burn from Lizard Wizard. Now Hot Dam's here. They do not want this fight. But if, if they can't get a reset, these fights are so difficult for them to play. Because mm -hmm. um, then, at some point, you just get out healed by by Swain, Senna, Seraphine, and uh, and you lose. You're not looking for the one v one, maybe. Oh, gets an Arden to the wall. Never mind. That idea got immediately shut down. You could see the formation yeah. of the thought, and then immediately it was extinguished. Unlucky. It's the it's the appropriate thing. I mean, you, you keep the Nar honest. Make him use his ult when it doesn't have a. I know the cooldowns. Well, actually, no, that's going to be up by the next time he goes to Mega. But, uh, you know. Better than letting him walk around with it. Probably going to be a dive up here onto Chad and Young. He does have the crown into the Shadow Flame. Nice footwork on the Swain abilities. Yeah, it gets but a lot of damage. Here comes the... a big bear. Yeah, turrets turned off. He gets stunned into the Demonic Ascension. Just throws the Primordial Burst into random capitals. Traps him in the cage right on the edge. They'll get the teleport in. The collapse maybe from ROTM, but Yuna 
just has to kind of stand there for a while. Kyle Good on the top side now with Hot Damn Jam. Indigo trying to find his way in. Now everyone from ROTM is here and can be brought to bear. But he goes in, gets the shutdown for Samira. Into the Inferno trigger! He's powering on through. Kenny is the last one. Well, never mind. Random Capitals is full health. I didn't <laughs> see the Swain underneath oh. all of that. He'll get the pull back. Random Capitals is still going at it. Uh, yeah, it's a double kill for the Swain and... Nard didn't have to be there. That's a 5v4 yeah, win for the whole thing Goofy was a, a 4v5 for Goofy Goobers, yeah. Did they pick up... So they pick up a shutdown on the bear, throw it into Samira. They don't get the Swain shut down, and, well, I said that like it... like they were close to getting the Swain shut down. Uh, Random Capital is looking extremely strong. He's worth a thousand gold. If they could have picked that character up, gotten that onto Kyle or Indigo or even Chad, uh... Then even if you came out with the man disadvantage, you might be feeling pretty good. But no, I don't know. They they've got about two minutes here to solve their Swain problem. I am feeling like Grievous Wounds would be a good place to start. Now, Grievous Wounds are really terrible this patch. Um, very nerfed. But you can't but... you can't let them go. You can't be letting them do it in a heal like that though. You, you you cannot be letting him do the heal thing like that. Yeah, I mean, you're playing against Bolly Bear, Swain, Senna, Seraphine. All four of these characters heal quite a bit, uh, especially in in these kinds of longer extended fights. Um, we gotta gotta find something that we can do about it. Yeah, but um... at the end of the day, you're you're also you're just down. 3,000 gold, so who can afford some little pissy 25% Grievous Wounds? Uh, Unikin, apparently. That's your big solution. Oh, my. I am excited, then, to see the, the PR with Gordrick or Tiamat and Executioner's Calling in this team fight. Uh, TP is available for Super Yacht. It's going to be coming in here. He's about halfway to Mega. Yeah, Milk Tea... Aged up right away. Gets Ice disengage. Good chunk onto Red Milk Tea. They have the sustain on the Sin of Seraphine. They should be able to top him up if they choose to. Yeah. Plus the plant. He'll be feeling fine. Super so, level 14. He's quietly a man. Like, he's 1-0-2. Hasn't really had to play much this game. But mm -hmm. uh, has worked himself into a nice position with the, the Sterix and the Trinity Force. Is two levels up. And he gets the Narsho back in onto Chad. Into the Encore. He gets blocked by wow. Indigo, but... Uh, where's the damage coming from? Lizard Wizard's gonna die, but now Indigo in. The Inferno Trigger popped, but it doesn't matter. There's just not enough sustained damage from ROTM. It's a double kill for Kenny Master Lin, and it's an Infernal Soul now for the Goofy Goobers. Yeah. Uh... Oh, did you see, did Yuna apply the Grievous Wounds? How much healing did he reduce? Oh, 174. Let Let's go. Yeah. Um, um, not to flame him for buying it, like somebody has no. to, but he can't apply yeah, it. Re respect for being being the one to bite the bullet, but uh, I will give you no dollars if you can guess which character on RTM applies it best. Oh, actually, first take a look at this drive. Okay. Yeah, that that was fine. Um, you gave me I didn't no give dollars. You a very good I didn't really incentivize that. But. Yeah, I, I don't know that I want to guess because I'm going to get it wrong and then well, you're going to flame it, me. It's, uh, it is Samira, right? Uh, the Samira, the Inferno Trigger, even if you get canceled out of it and you only get a couple ticks, kind of the only, only thing you have that is for sure going to be hitting almost the entirety of uh, Goofy Goobers. And she's coming in that fight with the pickaxe. I don't think coming in that fight with the Executioners instead of a pickaxe changes anything, but... I think Baron's going to be the target now for Goofy Goobers. He's going to be looking to set it up. Yep, and they're going to get a pick. Potentially? Nope. Oh, I maybe could have. <laughs> Red Milk Tea. Well, as we know, ACAB extends to Officer Volley Bear, so. Yeah. Um. <laughs> hey, it's a fun skin. Run around going wee wee wee. It's my, yeah. my Volley Bear skin of choice. Um. Oh, yeah. there he goes. There's the engaged Narsho into the wall. Onto Hot Damn Jam. Chad is just kind of left standing there as the Black Mage from Final Fantasy. Indigo trying to do his best, but can't even hit the Inferno Trigger. And, uh, 
Yeah, there's not really a whole lot of narration that needs to happen. That's a uh, Baron for yeah. uh, Goofy Goobers. There's a tower for Yuna. He's he's doing the Fiora thing. That's hey, yeah. Uh, frankly, uh, if you're ROTM, I is Kyle going for this? Path to... There's no way. There's no way he's in. Uh, oh, it was at 500. Right. I was baller. Didn't get it, but you know, I liked it. Um. So actually, I see the genius that Fiora picked now. While that while that whole play was happening, and Baron was being taken, so ROTM's team comp is so outmatched in the team fight that we simply selected Fiora and maybe hoped things didn't go this poorly, so that we could split a little longer. But uh, it's, it's super yachts going Sonya's. <laughs> Got the fiendish codex lined up. Yep, yeah, it's a it's a Zanya's Nar angle. Why not? I really hope I mean, he uses not? it in the middle of his like uh, Mega Nar ult, because uh, that can make some really funny uh, like stretch animations. Uh, they're just kind of running down ROTM right now. It's a good spell shield by Indigo. They're gonna try to turn the. We'll get the kill onto Super Yacht. Maybe if he had. A different item other than Zanya's Hourglass. Oh. That might have gone a little better for him, but it's not going to matter because the rest of the team is here to clean up. Indigo going in, hits the Inferno Trigger, and immediately hits the deck. It's a double kill for the Goofy Goobers, Swain, and a 2-0 for the team that was 0-3 coming into this week. Yeah. I mean, big ups to Goofy Goobers. I, you know, came in today. I could not really tell you why this team's 0-3. I think that, you know, outside of a little silliness here and there, they, by and large, outplayed RTM today, right? Yeah. Um, so, props to them. I mean, I, I said it going into game two, right? With the team comp you've drafted for Return of the Mill Sticks, it's going to be hard to win if you don't get ahead early in the game. And it looked like they might be doing that. And then, uh, just seems like it fell apart around some of the dragon fights where, you know, like I said, you're your team comps <laughs> just a little outmatched in the fight, so uh, nothing, nothing too big to beat yourself up about if you're turning the mill sticks. Uh, you're still three and one. You're still sitting good on the season, um, but definitely, you know, a series to look at and, and go back to the drawing board. And, you know, shows everyone still has some room to grow, even if you're you're the undefeated team. Now you're now you're a once defeated team. So, yep, yeah, and it feels like sure a lot of back to the drawing board for maybe drafting on this particular patch, but now you don't play on this patch again. Uh, you're off for a week, and then... Nope, never mind. You have to play one more game on this patch. <laughs> Fuck that. It's a three-week patch. Why do they do that? Because 4th of July, I guess. Um, yeah. So yeah, you do have another game on this patch in two weeks. Gotta, you know, maybe hit that reset button. Maybe the uh, the week off will help them out. But um, regardless, 2-0 for the Goofy Goobers. Uh, they played really well. That's all I gotta say. Um, let's go raid <laughs> Aegis. See what they yeah. got going. Uh, it's Glacial Esports Black versus TPGB. That's a team we haven't played yet. Um, it's in our group though, so these are two teams in our group. Uh, we just oh. beat Geb last week, so I don't know if you want to go root for them. Go, go say hi to Aegis though. Oh, oh we're sending six viewers on the raid. People okay. As as over. Big raid. Let's go. Hi, uh, probably probably seven. We're the.